Shalom, everybody. I want to welcome you out to Manna from Heaven Ministries, Remnant of Truth International, the School of Ministry. I hope you guys have a pen and a notepad or an iPad of some sort because you're going to want to take some notes. This is not going to be an exhaustive study. When you get into the fivefold ministry, that's the small series that we're doing. Um, it tends to go into a bunch of different directions. So what I want to look at as we begin is the origin of apostle itself so i'm going to wait for a few more people to, to just chime in here for a second as we uh, prepare please share like and subscribe you guys because we want to make sure others are having the ability to know what we're about to talk about so we praise you I'll open up with a word of prayer and then we'll just get in and and get going with this abba we praise you and thank you for every family that is tuning in we praise you, Abba, for your mercy that has been extended, your grace. And Abba, we thank you for the fivefold ministry. We thank you for that mighty outstretched hand on behalf of building up the foundation of your sons and your daughters within the kingdom. And we praise you, Father, that your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish what you send it out to do. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Um, before we get started, I, I want to just mention one thing. <clears throat> those of you that know, those of you that might not know, um, uh, Manna from Heaven and Remnant, We what we have done is we created uh, some religious exemptions that are available to other churches, believers within the, the body of the Messiah. And it has nothing to do with uh, doctrinal views within, say, Christianity, Hebrew roots, Messianic roots. As long as you're a believer and follower of the word, then you'll have something to stand on with the exemptions that we create. And I want to say this uh, as humbly as I can um, without sounding like I'm bragging on us. But I don't think there's another religious exemption affidavit uh, like the one we have created. We totally invoked all of our rights. And you can keep it simple. You don't have to. Uh, make anything extensive if, if you don't want but what we did is we did things way in advance because of what has been coming and i know there's other churches and ministries out there that have created their own and they created some very simple ones and that's fine you know but what we did is we created something for now and for the future when things begin to um uh, be unpacked in a very or i should say a much more demonstrative way when it comes to the powers that be so you don't want to wait till the end and then try to get something that is even more intense than what you have or more defined than what you already have. Not to say that your pastors or leaders have not done their due diligence whatsoever. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we have done ours. We have done ours to a full extent. We not only invoked our God-given rights, if I can say that, um, we invoked the laws of the federal government and the powers that be, not only um on this country but around the globe there's something called the bible of commerce that all countries have to abide by we invoke that as well so uh, if you guys desire to have one of those please contact us at livingmana.net or remnantoftruth.net and we'll get one of those uh, prepared for you as you follow the instructions pertaining to those so you can have the religious exemption it's available uh, you can also get the affidavit of a religious right that has some detail on there. These things go hand in hand. And I'm telling you, these things are powerful, especially these days. You know, the Messiah, he said something uh, before I get started. He didn't just come to, to a place to be tempted. He was tempted by Satan himself. He was challenged uh, to certain degrees. And every time he responded to the enemy... He responded with, it is written. He went to a written record that was there and available. While we've done a similar thing is we're not just saying giving hearsay. We have a written record that is available to be given to those who might be inquiring or even might try to challenge. And it cannot be rebutted whatsoever. So just an encouraging word. If you know a church, a ministry out there, let them know that we have done our due diligence. And if you're interested, just as a believer... Um, go ahead and let us know and we'll help you out with that. I uh, hope that's a blessing to you guys. Hallelujah. But let's get right into this. This is going to be part one. Last week was kind of a brief 
uh, in, or the week before, I'm trying to remember, <clears throat> uh, uh, introduction, I think it was the week before, to the fivefold ministry. And see, let me, let me get right into the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. We're only focusing on the apostle. You have the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, teacher. As a matter of fact, the, the word, uh, what the evangelist does is kind of a branch off of what the pastor is overseeing. And a teacher is something that can impact all five uh, of the fivefold ministry. It's like a hand. <laughs> it's like a hand. It's, it's, it's very interesting how that works. And we're going to look at that because today's modern day religion, the apostle seems to be the one on this golden seat that is uh, untouchable. We see this today. That what we see today within a lot of churches, I'm not here to start bashing churches or, or, or assemblies, but I got to make the point is we see a lot of stuff that is not biblically based. It is influenced and even manipulated to where today we see people with the title of apostle. Now, not everybody, but we see this all over the place with certain titles and they're placed on such a high pedestal that you can't even talk to them without going through a specific order. And I know that it things get weird out there and you got to protect yourself and whatnot. But uh, when it comes to the fivefold ministry, we've got to keep things uh, scriptural and keep it based off of what is written. So I just want to share that with you guys. We're going to get into some interesting things today. I hope you guys have your pen. If you, if you hear something that is just way over your head or too deep or whatever it might be, um, I'll try to communicate and highlight the best that I can. Remember, I'm not here to preach today. I'm here to, to bring forth a, a small teaching uh, that will bless you, I pray, in the name of Yeshua. Ephesians 4.11 says this, And he gave some, not all, some apostles. He gave some apostles. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28 says, and I'm just going to read it from the King James. And God has set some in the church or the assembly. First, apostles. I want you to hear this. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles in the gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, so on and so forth. When we break these things down, we, we can actually connect each one of these things after it ends with the teachers to the shepherd or, or pastors. I can't wait to get to the pastoral part. And that's not going to be today. Uh, even the prophet next week is going to be really something. That might be a two-parter. Uh, we're going to really unpack some stuff. <clears throat> Y'all willing. But each one of these categories after we hear the apostle, prophets, and teachers, right, uh, can fall into the category of pastors, evangelists, so on and so forth. And we, we can we can connect these things by the operations of the Ruach HaKodesh, the, the Holy Spirit in our lives. But notice what Paul continues to say, who wrote these two letters or someone wrote them for him, but they're by his hand and his authority. And Elohim has set some in the church, the assembly, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. So in the New Testament, there's a Greek word, and I'll mention this later on again, just briefly. It's apostolos. And it, it always denotes a man who is sent with full authority, apostolos, full authority. And it's actually synonymous with the Hebrew rendering, and we'll look at this as well, sholiach or shaliach. And this is throughout the scriptures. We're, we see this all over the place, some 800 and something times. I'll, we'll look at that as well. <clears throat> but there's something interesting um, when we look at the, if I could say the legal uh, aspects and the lawful uh, charges that are given that are represented by the individual or the man um, that will cause another to line up with what is written as they're sent out. So this meaning is actually it's 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 confirmed by the juxtaposition uh, in the verses throughout the New Testament. Hold on, I forgot to put my phone on vibrate um on the live are you okay okay love you that was my beautiful wife <laughs> i told him we were doing a live today so uh you can't get away from something that's live it's going for it. but let me just continue on um 
there's 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 a juxtaposition of Greek terms, and let me let me explain what I'm talking about. The Greek words doulos and kurios and apostolos and pethos. Hopefully, I didn't butcher those Greek words. I can read Hebrew better than the Greek, but the servant in Greek is called doulos. It stands under the jurisdiction of the master curios. I'm not going to go into all those details. That's for the other you students to check it out. And it actually, this servant derives from him all that he is. So the servant under his master, the doulos under his curios, he he is given all the um, uh he, everything about him comes from his master. He's a, a reflection of his master. Apostolos, where we get the, the English word apostle from, it denotes the, the commission now. There's one who's commissioned. He's a representative of a congregation he's sent out. He's one who's like an ambassador. You see this in, in Acts chapter 13, verse 2. And these are very important things to think about when we're when we're starting to look at these correlations in the New Testament. And that's where these Greek terms are are penned in the New Testament when it comes to, to, to certain types of things that are given. God himself or Elohim himself, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, that he appoints. He's the one that places these positions there that means you've got to make sure you have been called to something because the testing that comes with each anointing each grace or each office as many have heard is going to come with a discipleship program to graduate you into that thing if you want to be this apostle you're going to have to go through a discipleship program in order to graduate into that if you if you claim to be called to be a prophet you're going to have to go through a discipleship program by the creator himself and so on and so forth with each and every one of those uh, and apostles according to galatians 1 1 is called of the most high he calls them they minister in the power of the most high not not the wisdom of men look at this mark 16 20 says and they went forth that's the word you can use as apostle and preached everywhere the master working with and confirming the word with signs following. So the master, Yah himself, he works with and confirms his word through the ones that are sent. So the apostles that are sent, he will confirm his word. And I just want to say this. These past couple, going into the past couple years now, <coughs> things have transpired that has brought in great humility to things that were um, escalated by confession and, and, and uh, supposedly demonstration. And I just want to say this. If you're a true apostle, one that is truly sent, if you're one that has been called on that high level that you have bragged about for many, many, many years, then why is it that what, what has transpired in these past couple years going into, you have not been able to overcome. As a matter of fact, you still wear a mask on your face or something like that in your service. On your front row, when you're not in the pulpit, you have a mask on, your wife has a mask on, but yet you have an apostolic position and a prophetic uh, uh, office. That makes no sense to me. If the power of the Most High is moving in your midst and, can be, and it's confirming the word and he, the scripture, as the scripture says, confirming, confirming the word with signs following, working with the word, working with and confirming the word with signs following. If that's the truth, then why are these things not in position? It, it makes no sense. Who are the real apostles today? Are there any real apostles today? I, tr I truly believe we do have some, but the majority of what we see is we're going to we're going to break this down. And I'm just going to really focus only on the apostle because we're going to see what what kind of characteristics does the apostle fall into? Where is he originated from? Because the apostles we see today, they have no origin of the original. They have an origin of someone that called them out when God himself is the one that support Elohim is the one that appoints them. 
And now we have a whole lot of denominational influence. This denomination has this kind of apostle. This denomination has that kind of apostle. And none of it agrees in totality with what is written. One is throwing this out. The other one is accepting this. This one's tossing that out. This one's standing upon that. Where's the scriptural balance that makes all the apostles today look like one another, if I could say that, or you could tell that they come from the same place, from the same ground, from the same altar. What is really going on? What kind of a game is happening in the world around us? The apostle is one who forms part of the spiritual foundation of the called out ones. He's a sent out one to go to the called out ones to help rebuild the foundations of truth. Not denominational foundation, but the foundation of truth. This is key. That's what an apostle, a sent one does. He's sent to the called out ones. The prophetic word goes in advance before him to break down, to tear down, and the apostle builds up. We're going to look at these things. They lay spiritual foundations. Ephesians 2.20 says, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Yeshua the Messiah himself being the chief cornerstone. That chief cornerstone begins in the middle. And a true apostle, a true prophet will build upon all the truth of Yeshua HaMashiach himself. That means you're not going to leave anything out that, that is contrary to what is written. You're not going to manipulate, you're not going to change what is written to build a totally new foundation and then try to manipulate by way of domination those that are coming to your assemblies or whatever according to what you have created here. Now there's a chimera. There's a two-headed beast in the midst of a church setting that has nothing to do with heaven. Nothing. We're in the area in the era where things are where things are being exposed. Let me give you an example. We're in the days of Noah. We're truly in the days of Noah. Before the days of Noah were the days of Cain and Abel. And if you think about it, the scripture is a puzzle that you put together. In the days of Noah was cannibalism and Nephilim and all this kind of uh, uh, gene manipulation, gene splicing, creating these types of things. That's why Nimrod was a cannibal. But before all of that was the days of Cain and Abel. Because of murder that had transpired, the days of Cain and Abel. Notice it doesn't say Abel and Cain. It's always Cain and Abel. When you combine those two names, you have the word cannibal or cannibal. Cannibalism that was born because of hatred. The surface had been had been changed and, and transformed. In the days of Noah, we see these things. Remember, there was a certain group of people that that traveled up several times up to the to the place of Ai, and things transpired there, like we see today. But you have to read the text very carefully. To a place called Ai or AI, like today, artificial intelligence, we see these things being exposed. No wonder the Father allowed this masked thing to happen. Why the enemy has masked over all kinds of things of pharmakia. Ancient pagan names were given to certain over-the-counter things. I'll give you an example. In the book of Ezekiel, it talks about uh, the king of Tyre. Tyre is made up of two words, and I won't get into all the details, but it's the word tie that means to connect, to tie something, to, to, to connect one thing to the next. The word Rai is related to an ancient pagan god called Lenol. Lenol, when you bring the two, this sounds funny, but this is the truth. You bring the two together, you have Tai Lenol. They're masking pagan or sorcery behind over-the-counter drugs. Advil, a devil. This is not even a joke. It's word magic that they've done. We've entered the days of Noah where the masks are being removed by way of exposing. This is not a joke. This is, this is some serious stuff. More than ever, 
sorcery has hit the body of Christ, of Messiah. A, a facade has been placed over the fivefold ministry and the covers are being removed now. We're looking at the function of these fivefold ministry powers, anointings, graces. The majority of what you see on TV and YouTube today is, is the opposite. I'm telling you, let's just keep going. I don't want to go. We got so much to look at. The fivefold ministry is like Adam's hand. It's the Adam's hand. The last Adam's hand, the hand of the risen King Yeshua. That is the fivefold ministry. So we are commanded to represent as leaders within these fivefold areas to represent the kingdom of heaven by way of how we live and what comes out of our mouth. The first given, the scripture said, we read in Corinthians and uh in 1 Corinthians, the first given is the apostle. Because why? He's the one in rank and gets the greatest attention and all the accolades and all of that? No, because he's the first one from the ground. He's You could say he's like the thumb. He's the strength that comes from the ground. We're going to break this down and prove it to you from the word. The word, the word will not lie. The word will reveal the first area of mention called the first law of mention the law of first mention the law of first mention will will define how that term will be used throughout the rest of scripture the ultimate apostle is the mashiach he was sent from above to here and we'll look at these things hopefully <clears throat> i hope this is striking an interest in you guys as we speak right now so the first given is the apostle that the scripture records because this is the first one from the ground or that place of origins. I hope you're listening. The apostle is the lowest one, closest to the ground. He's the one that is closest, not to the world. I hope you guys are listening to me. He's not the one closest to the fashions of the world. That you got to look like the fashion, the go, go with the latest fashion show. There's nothing wrong with looking sharp and being dressed and taking care of yourself, grooming yourself and having some nice things. Nothing wrong with that. But not bragging and boasting about these things. The so-called apostle that is always doing that and, and flashy like that, he's far from the place of origin. He might preach a good game and it sounds good and his spitting and his eyes have have quin have 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 shut slight, slightly because of his fiery passion but that does not mean that he's closest to the ground by way of what he is showing the apostles the lowest one closest to the ground not the highest one and this is why we see that the teacher who is the one seen on the highest peak gets the greatest judgment of all five of the fivefold ministry. If the apostle was the one way up here, then he would have the greatest judgment. But it's the teacher, the scripture says. It says, do not desire to be teachers. Doesn't mean you don't have to, because you will be subject to a greater judgment. The teacher, you guys, is judged the way with 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 this harsh language why because he's the one he's the fruit handler he handles the fruit for the people to eat the teacher of the word of yah cannot mishandle the truth he cannot he cannot bring about a processed genetically modified way of what is written the the apostle listen to this the apostle cannot build upon another foundation other than the truth. The Psalms will tell you what the truth is. Proverbs will tell you what the truth is. Then the truth manifested in the flesh. You cannot build upon something opposite of a, a court record of heaven. The Bible's a document documented in the heavens of what is supposed to be and what is not. You got this foolish, false prophet, I'm going to say it, uh, here in America now came from Africa. Angel Java or something like that, flaunting Lamborghinis with doors open with his friends. That guy's a foolish, 
false prophet with a real prophetic gift manipulating people. He is a false prophet and there's many others like him. We've got to expose this stuff. Why? Because people are, are straying away. They have production companies rapping to the world. That's not a true prophet. A prophet was secluded, hated by the people. And I, I got to leave that alone because that's for next week. We're going to get into some powerful revelations with this. Let me move on here. The prophet can't tear down or manipulate foundational truths. The evangelist can't cover the nations with another foundational message other than the truth. The shepherd, the pastor, can't cultivate the sheep in anything other than the truth of the word, period. The teacher can't feed the flock with a GMO processed fruit of what is the truth. And remember, the pastor is a teacher as well. What is the apostle? You guys, according to the scripture, what is a shaliach in Hebrew? The now I'm gonna I'm gonna just leave this alone. The apostles to be an ambassador of pure truth, pure truth. One who is sent is sent holding the heart of the sender in his hand, and he is. And he is anointed to bring about the desire of the one that sent him. This is some very serious stuff. The apostle is nothing to joke with. It's closest to the ground. I'm going I'm to try to communicate this as much, as best as I can. There is too much going on today. I, I, I am I'm baffled, you guys. Seriously, I'm baffled to know that this past year, going into two years, so much was utilized to expose false prophets, false apostles, and people are still under those umbrellas of those individuals. I don't get it. Ah, I actually do. It's because there's pharmakia in the body of the Messiah. There's sorcery scriptural pharmakia scriptural sorcery being given over the counter the pulpits to temporarily ease emotional pain of the people instead of setting them free truly by connecting them to the foundational truths of the most high that's what's been going on but praise yah for the upcoming fivefold ministry that's going to flood the gateway is everywhere for the sake of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hallelujah. Let's look at the name in detail. And I'm talking detail. D this is probably as detailed as we can get. And there's more defining factors to this detail. But let's look at this from, from de the detail of apostle. What is apostle? I'm going to get some water while you guys get ready for this. <coughs> I hope you have a note pen. I hope <clears throat> I hope you guys have something to take notes with for what I'm about to communicate. I'm going to try to do this the best that I can. Apostle. We heard the Greek term. I might mention it briefly, but I want to focus on the Hebrew text. Some might say, well, uh, the New Testament was written in Greek. You, <laughs> There's too many areas in the New Testament that the Greek, tr the Greek manuscripts that they found, they're not originals that they found have Hebraic influence, Hebrew original influence in them. Why? Because they know that the Greeks did not talk like that. And I'll leave that right then and there. I, I have evidence of things that caused me to believe that the New Testament writers, there are copies of original Hebrew of those signed Shaul, signed Peter. I, I truly believe that because of certain things that are mentioned, but we'll leave that alone. It's not for today. The Hebrew word for apostle, which is really sent when apostle is more of a uh, fancy look at me now term, right? It's shaliach. Shaliach. It comes from the Hebrew word shalach. Three Hebrew letters. Shin, Lamed, Chet. Shalach. 
Shalak means basically just to send forth. It's someone or something sent. It's someone or something sent on a mission or with a message. You could have someone sent from to represent one country to another country. That's shalak or shaliak. Or you could have a pigeon sent with a little message tied around its little leg to another location. It doesn't matter. It means shalach means someone or something sent on a mission or with a message. That's an apostle. We see that the apostles in the New Testament were sent by the Mashiach Yeshua himself with the kingdom message. And in going forth to the regions they were sent, assemblies were built because of the message. And overseers were appointed because of the gathering of the scattered house of Israel. So it means someone sent on a, or something, someone or something sent on a mission or with a message. Most of all, you guys, for the, for the sake of the kingdom, the sent ones are sent. When I'm, we're looking at the fivefold ministry, that's the main focus. Sent for the sake of the kingdom. Shalak, think about this. Look at this. Remember in Hebrew, there's pictures. Shalak, pictographically, it reveals the actual hidden nature of the apostle. Follow me now. <laughs> Shalak, in its picture form, contains the hidden nature of the apostle. And it means this. To press the covenant house toward the shepherd that's a true the nature of the apostle is to press the covenant house towards the shepherd by way of the teaching of what is written that's a true apostle if there's an apostle out there today that is teaching the law of the Most High is done away with and can't bring a distinction of what has been fulfilled. They do not even know the nature of what they're claiming. Because the law is not done away with. We've talked about this before. We had a, we had a Sabbath debate with a so-called apostle I thought was a friend. And the following day bashed me. And now he's blocked me on everything. Why? Because he's wrong. What is he wrong about? He's wrong about the nature of the apostolic. And it was challenging to him to where he blocked and would not be humble enough to correct some things that he was at fault with. But that, who cares? But we see these things. It means to press the covenant house toward the shepherd, toward by way of the teaching of what is written philippians 3 13 to 14 talks about this pressing towards the mark of the high calling of elohim you guys so as i calm down a little bit a true apostle builds the foundation upon the shepherd upon the chief cornerstone an apostle shaliak will know listen the difference between holy and profane they will not call what is profane holy, and they will not call what is holy profane. I'll prove it to you. You got some apostles saying that wine is unholy, but yet that is the thing that touches the altar, which makes it holy. Anything that touches the altar is holy. Drunkenness is unholy. You got to define things properly, not throw the baby out with the bathwater. A true shaliak will know the difference between what is kadosh and what is Shakar, what is profane? They'll know the difference. Like I said, today's apostles we see today, not all of them, but many, don't seem to, to, to bring a distinction between what is holy and profane according to the Bible because of replacement theology. You have a lot of men and even women with an apostolic title but their source does not come from God, Elohim. Their source is not based off of the covenant. 
their source is based off of replacement theology. Replacement theology is the mother to a lot of those apostolic positions today and prophetic positions today, not the source of what has been written. That's a fact. A true apostle knows what was nailed to the cross or to the tree and what was not. Now watch this. I should say, listen to this. Shalach in Hebrew means the word itself, not the pictograph, but the word means the first shoots of a plant or a tree or a shrub or a bush. The first shoots from the ground that creates a strong trunk because there's roots connected to it. You have a lot of apostles that lack the root, the deep root into the ground. The altar revelation of our Messiah Yeshua. The apostle is one that is always connected to the altar of the king and forever serves this place until the time of arriving into the new Jerusalem. Listen to the first place that apostle is mentioned. I hope this is blessing you guys. If you want to uh, type something, something inside of the chat that this is blessing you, just type in. Shaliach, however you know it's supposed to be styled in sound. But let's look at the first place where apostle is mentioned. It's not a New Testament thing. It's not a book of Matthew thing, a book of Mark, a book of Luke, or a book of John thing. It is an Old Testament origin. And it goes way back to the beginning. I, I was going to do a two-part to this, but I won't. I'll let you guys go and do it. I was going to go through all the different apostles throughout Scripture from Adam all the way through, leading up to the Messiah himself and then the send out ones. But the first place that apostles seen is in Genesis chapter 3. And let's read from verse 22 going into 23. And Yahweh Elohim said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now unless... He put forth his hand, unless he put forth his hand. I want you to note that phrase down that I'm highlighting. Unless he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever in what? In the state of separation. So if Adam would have put forth his hand towards the tree of life in a fallen state, all of us would have been forever separated from the Creator because the tree of life will sustain. The Scripture never records Adam or the woman eating from the tree of life. They, did, they never did. Right here says, keep their hand from eating there. Verse 23, Therefore Yahweh Elohim sent him forth. Notice in verse 22 it says, He put forth his hand, unless he puts forth his hand. Here, now Elohim sends him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from where he was taken from. Unless he put forth his hand in Hebrew is pen yishlach yado. Pen yishlach yado. Which basically means to send forth your hand. So before Adam could apostle his hand, if I could say that he was sent out as an apostle, to serve and represent the ground or the altar authority that he came from. The apostle is the one who can hold the key to the fivefold ministry, you guys. That's a, that's, a, that's a truth. The roots of all the other graces, all the other anointings, all the other uh, offices are found by way of the bridge called the shaliach, the apostle. The apostle contains the secret of the roots of all of those the fruit of those reveals the roots they came from. The fruit of the apostles we see today that they're bringing forth can show the evidence. And I'm not talking about how much they're doing. That don't mean anything. They, that could be a Martha type apostle. There's Martha apostles and then there's Mary apostles. There's Martha apostles doing all this so-called ministry stuff and doing all kinds of stuff but they're so far from the feet of the altar of the Messiah that the Messiah says, Hey, Martha, Martha, apostles, you're busy doing way too much. Look at the Mary apostle. She's sitting at my feet learning what it really means to be an apostolic anointed one. <clears throat> I'm telling you guys, 
We need Mary apostles. Is, is somebody listening to me? Or if we were in a in a Pentecostal church, can I get an amen? Or a Baptist church, right? Can I get an amen? Can someone agree with that? There is a lot of Martha apostles today doing a lot of stuff, and people think that's ministry. That's there's a truth to that, but what's going on is not in, not the entirety of the truth. We've got to sit like Mary. At we've got to be a Mary apostle at the feet of Mashiach and be married to the truth. Be married to the unadulterated truth of what is written. That's a fact. Before the Adam could even send his hand out, he was sent as that apostle to serve this very altar. And I wrote a book on the altar thrones of Genesis 1.1. The apostle is the one who can hold the key to this fivefold ministry that is supposed to manifest the essence of the priesthood of Yeshua. The Melchizedek order. I don't think it's, it's a coincidence that the apostolic of this phrase, the anointing, this phrase in Hebrew has the same numerical value. Pen Yishlak, excuse me, Yado. Pen Yishlak, Yado holds the same numerical value as Etsem Melchizedek, which means the essence of the Melchizedek. The essence of the Melchizedek, the, the essence of the priesthood order that the Messiah came off of, came from, excuse me. The word etsem is used as bone in Genesis 2.23. Etsem, Melchizedek, holds the same secret mystery of Adam sending his hand forth. Why? Because the Mashiach would be the hand from heaven sent to the earth to bring people back to the tree of life, not feed upon the tree of life and keep mankind eternally separated from the creator. The first Adam would have reached to the tree of life to indulge himself, leaving all descendants away from Abba. The last Adam was the hand sent to redeem wayward man back to himself so we would all have part of the tree of life in our redeemed state. That's real. I hope that makes sense. That's real. The apostle is the one who breaks the barriers, who breaks through the ground, who breaks through the religious foundations to free up the people from the grips of the pharaohs. You have a lot of pharaonic apostolics today behind pulpits, a lot of dictator type apostles, a lot of full, biz, full gospel businessmen behind the pulpits as apostles we need apostles that are breaking forth from the ground of the altar of truth with the mantle of elijah upon them that they are carrying that will bring forth the wayward a lot of people are saying john you need to go out to the streets and all that if the father wants me to i will but there's a wisdom that he's giving me now you can't just say ah, i'm gonna go to under the bridges i'm gonna go over here i'm gonna go over there. there's nothing wrong with that if you're sent if you're not sent, you could be casting your pearls before the swine. These days, you've got to know where you have been sent. We've preached everywhere, riverbeds, downtown LA, homeless, you name it. We've done so much, and the, the, the result was not very fruitful all the time. People remain where they're at. People died in the place they chose to remain in. But now we've been given a greater platform to touch hundreds of millions and we're about to go there. We're doing our evangelistic work with an apostolic anointing to bring the truth of the kingdom message so that the wayward house of Judah and Israel will come home. I said I wasn't going to preach and here we go. I can't help it. You guys are going to have to pray for this guy here. <clears throat> the apostles, the builder of the kingdom while the prophet comes to tear down the forbidden walls of idolatry a true biblical apostle you guys is one who knows the difference like i said between the holy and the profane between the clean and the unclean between what is accepted and what is not can i just shake air can i ruffle your chicken feathers today can I ruffle your the feathers of your religious feathers? Can I do that? Can I can I get a few of you people to say, go ahead and ruffle our feathers? Can I can I ruffle the religious feathers of these fake Martha apostles today? 
if you have a hard time pushing away from the table and you claim to be an apostle, you just might be one born out of replacement theology or a Martha type of an apostle. If you have a hard time agreeing with what the scripture says of what goes in your body and what does not, and that now in Jesus, he redeemed us from the old school menu and gave us a new menu that has blank pages that we could put anything down because the blood has covered it and I could stuff my face with the pagan uh, dainties of the world. That is wrong. You're not a true apostle. Apostle knows what is kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. He's a carrier of the name. He's born out of the altar of the king. I see very few like this. There are some. I believe I have an apostolic anointing on my life. And that was recognized by some men. But I'm not going around saying I'm apostle this, apostle that. It was recognized. Well, so be it. May Abba be honored. And I'll, I'll flow how he wants me to flow. I'll break up religious grounds. I'll burst forth with the truth of his kingdom. I think I do that now. But I have a heart of a shepherd for the people. <clears throat> Many with the title apostle. I'm going to behave a little bit because I'm getting intense here. You can only activate true apostolic anointing from the service of the king's altar. You got to spend time in that altar. You heard me earlier. Let me go back to this verse. Therefore, Yahweh Elohim sent him forth from the Garden of Eden. He sent Adam forth from the Garden of Eden. Adam <clears throat> was one who, how can I say this? Adam went from being a, a, a created king from the ground to now having to serve the ground. He went from the position of the, of, a, of, a, of the king of the earth to now a sent one to the earth. I want you to think about that. When we come to the altar or the ground, some might say altar ground, that's a difference. You'll see what I'm talking about. Adama in Hebrew is the ground, but it's the place where things are formed, fashioned from, like the altar of the Messiah. Your new life was given identity at his altar he's the last adam ha adama adam in the heart of the altar is the mashiach standing as your advocate the word shalak apostle is seen 800 and 80 times in the old testament alone 53 in the new testament i find it interesting that it's 53 in the new testament why because the numerical value 53 gives us gun, garden, true apostolic anointings will bring us back to the freedoms that were given to us in the garden. The apostles are to bring freedom from the grips of idolatrous foundations. 53 is also Ha Yobel, the Jubilee, the freedom. Apostles, you guys, are to be the sound of the prophetic shofar that brings freedom because of the good news. That's what Yobel is. The sound of Edens, the sound of freedom. The sound of the gardens, the sound of Jubilee. A true apostle comes with a voice of freedom from the idolatrous grips of the ways of the world and the good news message of the kingdom that frees us up from the law of sin and death. That's what was nailed to the tree, to the cross was the law of sin and death and the unfaithful words that were against the wayward bride. Period. Man, I got so much to share with you guys. How long do we got? Oh, we got plenty of time. I got 40 minutes maximum. Let's look at the variations of shalak. We're talking about the characteristics, the nature of the apostle. So far, what I think what has been, I believe, hopefully, what has been shared gives you an idea to measure up certain apostles today. Well, I built this church, this church. I built all over 500 churches. 
but are they based upon the foundation stone of truth? Is there holiness that has been instituted? Is there an Acts 15 verse 20 implemented in that church assembly? Then you built something upon your own, your own denominational uh, opinion. Your own apostolic conviction instead of the arresting of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, HaKadosh, that brings us to the truth that sets us free. To be arrested by His Spirit is to be set free from the shackles of lies, darkness, and the, and the, the schemes of religious men. Let's look at some variations of the apostle. I'm supposed to be teaching, and my goodness, I just can't help this. I get so fired up. Certain variations of shalach. Here's the beauty of Hebrew. Let me calm down a little bit. The beauty of Hebrew. From shalach, we have another variation called shelach. I mentioned this last week, but I just want to bring this out again. It means a missile or like a laser-guided weapon. It also means the skin or the hide of an animal, meaning that the true shaliach is one that is laser guided like a missile to reach those who have been garmented in the fall flesh nature of an animal nature to free them up. The one sent like the first breaking of the ground. That's shalak. Interesting, huh? You have shalak. It's related to shalak. It's a worker with the hides of animals. What does that mean? An apostle knows how to restructure the cause of the negativity of generational curses and iniquity. He knows how to restructure the life of someone. He knows how to stretch it out and tan it under the sun, S-O-N, under the truth. He'll stretch it and beat it a little bit, maybe not physically per se, spiritually speaking, but he'll beat it with the truth, but it's seasoned with the love of the Most High, so that all the other uh, elements that it was impacted by will be removed, and then he'll reform that around a new vessel. And that new vessel will contain fresh water, or fresh wine, or whatever it might be. That's a shalach. These are the, this is the nature of an apostle from the Hebrew text. Hebrew uh, meaning of the word. Shalak means to strip bare. It will remove the outer layers of things because of the kingdom message of truth. Did, did you know that the, the apostolic authority of Acts built the people into what was holy and, and the, it, it, the, the apostolic authority of the book of Acts it actually built the people into what was holy from what was profane. It built them into, it, the, that authority built them into holiness. The apostles should know the difference of these two things. This is a big deal. Shalak is embedded inside the elements of creation. I want you to really follow me here. It would take the, the Adam, the Adam, the last Adam to activate these graces. Adam, the first Adam, he held the authority to execute these very things before the fall. He had the ability to activate all five. The fivefold ministry is seen in Acts chapter in, in Genesis chapter one and chapter two. All the entire fivefold ministry, the way things were to be cultivated and grow. Adam contained the activating authority of those, but he fell. And it wasn't until after his fall that he was sent to serve the Adama instead of living from this place. Adam was sent to serve the ground that he was intended to live from. The fivefold ministry, listen, is not something to be excited about. I hope you're listening to me. Listen, please. The fivefold ministry, you're not to be excited to be called an apostle. It was never intended to be. But because man fell, the hand is sent forth to redeem. And it takes some sensitive getting your hands dirty.
to bring about something clean. All the apostles were killed, except for one. The fivefold ministry is not something to be excited. It's, don't be excited to really be called a prophet. Why? Because you'll be sent with a word to tear down what has been, and everyone will hate you. The biblical prophets were hated. Today, we see glamorous so-called prophets. They, they have a prophetic gift, probably. But it is so glamorized and Hollywoodized. It is, it's sad. True biblical prophets will not change because modern days change. While the modern day, and don't, don't get offended anybody, I'm not judging anyone what I'm going to say. While the modern days now, as us prophets, we're wearing our skinny jeans. Wear your skinny jeans, cool. But you know what? Let the true prophet stand up, not this stuff. The fivefold ministry is not something to be excited about because it is a result of the fall of man and the rebuilding. The New Testament now, the risen king sends out the fivefold ministry. Why? For the sake of regathering from the pits in the mire and the pig pens of the world, the lost sheep that belong to him. In the New Jerusalem, there'll be no apostles. In the New Jerusalem, the last residue of what an apostle was will be a foundation stone. Will be a pearly type stone of the original ones sent. But in the New Jerusalem, there's no apostles, there's no prophets, there's no evangelists, there's no pastors, there's no teachers there. It says we will know, we will know there'll be no need for us to teach one another. Then you got some running around today, they're like Lone Ranger, wannabe preacher, apostles, whoever they are. Watching things today, they, they, they don't believe you need to be under an authority. We need authority. We need the fivefold ministry right now because we're still outside where we need to be, and it's part of bringing us back in. The first sending apostle scripture is found, as I read in Genesis 3, verse 22 to 23, after the fall, it's Adam. Adam was not allowed to shalak his hand, send his hand out to the tree of life. The true nature of the fivefold ministry, you guys, has always been to reach toward the tree of life. When men get in the way and bastardize the fivefold ministry offices, we end up with mixed up mega churches. That's what happens. Guar and guaranteed every mega church on earth is a defiled assembly engrossed in secret abominations not saying the people all are but it is there it is there the bible talks about not going with these majorities these masses and multitudes this is scary stuff and you can see it i can drop names right now of mega churches these guys are mixing like it's unholy and they are are perf they are perf they just have perfected in eloquence their, their speech on stage that's captivating. We've got to stick with what is written. The hand, you guys, is to, is to reach toward the tree of life when the tree of life has redeemed the hand and has redeemed the place and the people and restored the power. The hand will impact the body. The fivefold ministry can impact the body. A fivefold ministry that is tainted with the ways of this world is forbidden to touch the tree of life. Adam to remove him before his his shalak. He he apostles his five the fivefold hand here to the tree of life and stay like that. The fivefold ministry holds the the choice of bringing people to life or bringing them to the to to a, a waywardness. This is frightening stuff we see today. As I said, Adam went from being the king of earth to the apostle of the ground. It's not an exciting thing. That's why, if you notice, he sent some to be this and that and this, the fivefold ministry. But we have been called to be kings and priests after the order of Melchizedek. We are to walk as kings and priests. The fivefold ministry is for the gathering and the building up of the house so we can put on royalty. 
The fivefold ministry is, is designed to bring about the gathering of Israel by way of the kingdom message so we can put on the garment of kings and priests of his kingdom and be true representatives, ambassadors of this thing. Shalak is the first shoots of the plant, like I mentioned. Now, let me give you something so interesting. And it's seen in generations too with, uh, uh, with fathers, grandfathers, great, great uh, fathers and sons and great grandchildren and great, great grandsons and so on and so forth. It's also seen in connection with the fivefold ministry and the beginning. I'm going to give you something from the beginning of our Bibles. The trunk of a tree or the stem from the ground, the shalak is the first breaking of it. So you have the apostle and the other four revelations I'm going to give you right now is a representation of the fivefold ministry. The shalak is the first breaking of the ground. Why? Because the roots have now found their grip to the ground they have now been secured and 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 uh, uh firmly rooted and grounded in him the ground i'm speaking symbolically now and literally but the trunk or the stem from this place is called geza in hebrew gimel zion ayin if you don't know these letters you can google them they're everywhere geza Geza is, is this first stem from the ground that forms the trunk of a tree or a bush or plant. Geza also holds the prophecy of the coming of the Messiah Yeshua found in Isaiah. I got Bible for everything. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1. It says this, And a rod shall come forth from the Geza of Yeshai, Jesse, a rod shall come forth from the Geza, Jesse, the stump of Jesse, and a sprout from his roots shall bear fruit. The stump is Geza. Geza holds the prophecy of the rod who would come forth from the stump, the Geza. The apostle comes forth from the Geza. The first breaking of the ground begins to bulk up and become the Geza. The kingdom expands in an apostolic way and forms the Geza. Just follow me now. This is very interesting. The sent one is Yeshua. The apostle is always in direct connection to, to all that Yeshua, all, and I mean all, all that Yeshua is and all that he represents. The, a true apostle never veers away from that. From the word Geza, Gimel, Zion, Ayin, gives us the next phase in this revelation of a tree. It's called Anaf. It means the branches of a tree. Isn't it interesting that the last letter of Geza begins the next phase of this process of a tree? Very powerful. Geza ends with an ayin, the Hebrew letter that means to have to means to know and means to, to, to have the knowledge of something. For my people perish for the lack of knowledge. We need the knowledge of the truth. So from there, a branch off of this stump begins to form called an anaf. Well, isn't it interesting that during Sukkot we gather anaf, we gather branches to celebrate Sukkot? The apostle, you guys, is to be in tune with all the appointed times, all of them, and not see them as a mere ritual, but vessels of prophecy waiting to be unlocked as they, are pre as they prepare the body by way of rehearsing for the coming of the king, our king, Yeshua. That's what an apostle, he's supposed to be in tune with these things, not say, well, these are the Jewish feasts. Right when they say these are the Jewish feasts of the Lord, they, they lack knowledge already. I mean, they, when they say these are the, the Jewish feasts, they just lack the knowledge. They know, there's not a verse that says these are Jewish things. These are Yahweh's things, Yahuwah's things, Yehovah, the Lord, the Most High. These are His appointed times. And the apostle, true apostle, should know this. 
You can't be apostle, a true apostle if you're not learned already in these things. If you've been an apostle for 40 years and you don't know, you're, you're truly not. You've been building churches opposite of what is written when it comes to these kingdom truths, this type of foundation. Geza ends with ayin, while Anaf begins with ayin. The apostle's goal is to bring the people to the knowledge, ayin, the outpouring of truth. The outpouring of the truth of the branch that Isaiah 11 speaks of in order for the fruit of the message to be born. Well, what do you know? From Anath, we move to Parach and Pri. The last letter of Anath begins the word Parach and Pri. The flower and fruit that is blossoming, seen in favor of the priesthood of Numbers chapter 17 and the menorah. We are, the apostle is to bring, is to be the goat, is, it, it's supposed to be uh, uh, reflecting all of these things. The fivefold ministry is to be reflecting in unison. You can't have a prophet doing one thing and an apostle doing another, a pastor, a shepherd doing this, a teacher doing an evangelist speaking this. That's a, a confused, shattered body. All of them in unison, bearing the teacher. The final phase is when the teaching comes forth. The fruit reflects the hidden roots that are embed, embedded in the ground or the altar of the Messiah. The apostle holds the key to the revelation of, of the fruitfulness of the kingdom, you guys. See, today, well, I'm telling you, just listening to these things brings a little more sight, insight, and truth to the fivefold ministry that we see today. And like I said, don't get me wrong, there are real apostles today. Real, I believe there's some prophets today. Um, there's evangelists, uh, there's true shepherds. We, we saw some things with the shepherd. There's a, we'll get into that later. And teachers of these truths. I pray that I'm one of them doing the best that I can for the body right now. So the apostle holds the key to the revelation of, of the fruitfulness of this fivefold ministry and of the kingdom. Because he's connected to the roots he only breaks through the ground because he's rooted and grounded. You can't have the first shoots of a plant if there's no roots. The first thing that happens when a, when a seed germinates, it breaks forth immediately when water and the moisture touches and, and mixed with the minerals. And the first thing that comes forth are roots gripping and becoming a part of the ground, which is the altar of its origin. Then it's the shoots of a plant. Check this out. The numerical value of, of this process of the tree is equivalent to two powerful phrases that I believe are, are very telling, which are these, Betzelem Elohim bara oto, which means in the image of God created he them, Genesis 1.27. The revelation of the apostle will lead the people back to the beginning so that the believer will have removed the former garments of, of the fall off, if I could say that, of sin and put on the image of the creator to put on the royal garments of, the, of a king priest of royalty of the kingdom. The true apostle will lead people back to this way. I was going to say something, but I'm, I'm going to behave myself. Goodness, boy. Abba, hallelujah. The next phrase that is equivalent to this process we just heard about with the tree that reflects the nature of the apostle and the fivefold ministry is Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai, which means you are mighty forever, master of all. So the apostle breaks forth from the ground or the Adama altar in order to clothe the people in the image of Elohim, who is the master of mankind. There's so much in this. As a matter of fact, Shaliach holds a value as well of 348, which is the same for the word Mashach. Mashach, which is found and means to anoint, found in Numbers 3525, which says this. Before I read that, this verse is dealing with something important. This type of Mashach, the shaliach contains, the shalah, the shaliach 
348 is equivalent to Mashiach, which is a word related to Mashiach, the anointed one, the Messiah. The death in this verse of the high priest frees the death-carrying guilty one. And a pa true apostle knows the true message of the cross, if I can be down the brass tacks. Why Jesus Yeshua came, what was nailed to that cross. Stop confusing people with nonsense because you can't contain your fleshly appetite. Speak the truth even when it cuts. The Bible was designed to cut this flesh and make it feel uncomfortable. Not to make it feel good. We're not to bring a feel-good message. We're to encourage one another, lift each other up with the truth. The more we are connected to the truth, the less offended we shall be. The more offense that is there, it's because there's too much flesh in our life. Numbers 35, 25. The congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger huh, of blood, and the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge where he was fled, and he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest, which was anointed, Mashach, with the holy oil. The apostle knows that what was imprisoning mankind was sin and death. Sin and death hindered the enclosement of the image we just talked about. The image is to be seen here on the earth while the likeness of the Most High is the is heaven's garment for those who have kept the commandments of Elohim and hold fast to the testimony of Yeshua. Revelation 12, 17 and 14, verse 12. And this is the message that Yeshua HaMashiach came to deliver us from the law of sin and death that was placed upon all of us. That apostolic anointing, you guys, rebuilds the foundational truths of the altar king, Yeshua, that, that, that the lies of religion has deceived and covered up and brings the wayward branch home to a place of covenant status again in him. That's why the dove was sent out, shalak. The dove was apostled out and brought forth a broken branch from an olive tree. Every apostle should have the same focus of bringing back the broken house of Israel to be sioned and grafted back into that place that they were intended to be engrafted into. So the apostle, you guys, in closing breaks through with all these truths I just mentioned, but there's someone else who shatters the ground for the apostle, and that is the prophet. So you're going to have to tune in next week for this revelation when we examine the prophet. I hope you guys were blessed, and we'll see you next week. Remember, please share, like, and subscribe. Um, us here at Manna from Heaven Ministries, Render the Truth International, the school ministry. We just, we love you guys. We want to bring the truth from an apost apostolic platform, but with great humility. As Pastor Dave, myself, we have the hearts of shepherds. Minister Brittany Scott is, is a shepherdess. She has the heart of a shepherd as well for the people. So please, you guys, take this message out. Let people know that there's more to that was given to us. And also remember what I said in the beginning about the religious exemptions we're offering. You got to go to livingmana.net, uh, remnantoftruth.net. Uh, hit livingmana.net first. <laughs> Bombard Brittany Scott. <laughs> this kid, she, she's got a whole lot on her table, but I'm here as well. Uh, we put them together. These things are powerful. If your church, your pastor's not giving them to you, he's obligated to, to help you. We're here, you guys. There's a way of obtaining these. You just got to follow the prompts, the instructions. When you message, you private message livingmana.net um, or remnantoftruth.net uh, will help you out. If you know ministries that need help, believers that need help, we're here to help you guys out. And, and Abba has given us a way for this. There's states that, like Texas, they're, they trumped all these things. You don't have to worry about anything. But you know what? I would still get something because that's not going to last. You want to have a good standing in advance, not last minute. 
showing that my stuff's dated way back here, even though things seem to be going fine. So you guys just, you can contact us. We'll, we'll take care of that for you guys. We love you guys. Shalom. Laila Tov, have a good evening. I pray that this was a blessing to you. If you want to give tonight, sow a seed toward this work so that I can come back next week. No, just kidding. If you just want to sow a seed, be a blessing to the ministries, you can go ahead and do that. Go to livingmana.net or remnantoftruth.net and go ahead and sow a seed, whatever it is. And that actually helps us with things with the ministry now that we've taken on even more. And it's a blessing. We love you guys. Shalom, shalom.